Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, Howard Wade, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you for joining us. Today, the theme will be not just efficiency, but super efficiency. There is hope for the world. And to demonstrate that is a young man, Brett Floystadt of TRC Sales. Welcome to the program, Brett. Thanks for having me, Howard. Appreciate it. And just as a bit of background, we're going to be talking about uh, air conditioning or HVAC technology. But to give a more comprehensible context, look at the fact that we in Hawaii have many, many, many more cars on the road than we did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And yet, if you look at gasoline sales, they're down. How could that be? All these new cars sit sales down. The reason is because each individual car or light truck is more energy efficient. It gets a higher miles per gallon rating. And that rating is continuing to go up and up and up. And the same holds true for HVAC systems. Brett represents the creme de la creme of <laughs> HVAC efficiency. And the technology is moving ahead so rapidly. It's not moving ahead as, as quickly as computers. But by George, every time I turn around and look at HVAC efficiency, there's something new, something different, not just in the efficiency rating itself, but in the controls. We can now control these devices precisely so that you just put as much cold air where you want it, when you want it. None of this, just turn it on and let it blast everybody, including empty rooms. So on that cheery note, Brett, welcome to the program. Thank you. Why don't we bring up the uh, first slide and, and you can introduce yourself here. I'm Brett Floystad with TRC Sales. We're a manufacturer's representative. We represent about 14 manufacturers, our mm -hmm. large ones being Fujitsu and solar plow fans. Very mm -hmm. energy efficient equipment that's mm -hmm. leading the way here in Hawaii. Yeah, I, I follow energy efficiency very, very quickly and this is a reason why you have been one of the select few. Speaking of which, disclaimer, even though Brett and I will be talking about one particular manufacturer today, neither I nor the state of Hawaii nor Think Tech Hawaii in any way, shape, or form endorses this particular product. There are many, many, many other good competitive uh, products out there. So, Brett, I've been following HVAC efficiency for many, many, many years. <coughs> we measure the efficiency in SEER, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio, and may maybe we'll get into that. But when I first got into the field, a decent SEER, believe it or not, was eight or nine, oh. meaning you could deliver, say, eight or nine, I'm, I'm going to use this layman's terms, and then you can get us straight. You could deliver eight or nine units of cold air for every watt that went into the system. And you know what? I'm going to let you blow everybody's socks off later as, as you present <laughs> the uh, Fujitsu system. But think baseline eight or nine. So what do you what do you have to begin with here, uh, Brett? And we can do the next slide here. Yeah. So here we have the history of Fujitsu air conditioning. It started out in 1960 with those window AC units mm -hmm. we still mm -hmm. see being sold today. They moved into the mini split market, which are the more efficient, better performing mm -hmm. equipment. You can see some of the pictures they have there, like the multi-path heat exchanger, some of the revolutionary inventions that they came forth with to the market. Now, now these are the examples of the time, uh, type of improvement that uh, have allowed that sear to go up and up and up Correct. over the years. Yeah. All of the manufacturers have been kind of battling in terms of inventing new technology to really mm -hmm. increase the sear rating or efficiency of this equipment. Mm -hmm. 
And so you see there with the multi-path heat exchanger, that really allowed the refrigerant to be distributed in a more efficient manner and created a little bit better flow so they could get that refrigerant outdoors and then back indoors to collect more heat. Mm -hmm. And another cool invention that they came out with is the Lambda style heat exchanger, exchanger down there at the bottom, which is the Lambda shape. And that really gave a lot of surface area for that heat to be collected over that heat exchanger and those aluminum fins. Mm -hmm. And so they came out with these two inventions. Other manufacturers have followed. We followed their inventions too. So mm -hmm. it really pushed the envelope in terms of efficiency. We know that's really important here. The, the, especially this, is, with, this is competition at its best, by the way. Correct. Yeah. And especially from the mainland where I'm from, it's all mm -hmm. ducted systems. So mm -hmm. when I first came here, it was the first time I saw a split system, and it mm -hmm. really showed the value of the technology. Let's so, talk for, for a minute about uh, split systems, because most of the audience out there is not going to know what it is. We do are familiar with the old, what are now called the window shakers, those rectangular yep. boxes hanging out the window. And number one, they're noisy. Number two, they're inefficient. And number three, they had rather short lives, if I remember right. correctly. So what is the difference between those old-fashioned <laughs> window systems and, and a new split system? So the old-fashioned window system is kind of like an all-in-one unit. It mm -hmm. has the compressor, the outdoor heat exchanger, indoor heat exchanger, and the fan all in there. Mm -hmm. With the split system, it just does that. It splits the components up. So it splits the kind of the noisy compressor, mm -hmm. puts it outside where you don't mm -hmm. necessarily mm -hmm. gonna hear it. And then the indoor unit that produces the cold air or collects the heat and brings it to the outdoor unit is on the inside. And all that all <coughs> all that's inside there is mechanically is a fan motor, which is mm -hmm. designed to be really quiet. Mm -hmm. So it really split the noisy <coughs> from the cooling part to give us that comfortability, that performance, mm -hmm. which also gave us great efficiencies as well. And incidentally, as technology improves, you use the word comfort and performance and quiet. Correct. Everything is improving. So <coughs> we look, the, the old window shakers are kind of the bad old world, and this is the good old world. De delivering higher quality cool air as much as we want, when we want, in a much more quiet uh, fashion. Correct. You can kind of compare those old window shakers to a, a, <coughs> maybe um, an older car, to where mm -hmm. whenever mm -hmm. you're driving behind an older car, you can smell the fumes, and mm -hmm. that's because it's not burning all of the fuel. Precisely. And yeah. so now, Behind a newer car, even some of the cars, they say nearly zero emissions. Mm -hmm. That means it's not it's burning all of the fuel inside that combustion chamber. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just like the cars, Fujitsu and other manufacturers with the split type units have increased the performance, got us more horsepower. Mm -hmm. Now we got the horsepower of a Corvette, but we got the gas mileage of a, of a Prius. <laughs> there you go. There, there's, so, there's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we take a look at the uh, next slide, then? So here we have some, what really adds to the, or is the heart of the air conditioning system is the compressor. And the compressor is what compresses the refrigerant and allows it to have a high heat capacity when it goes into the inside to absorb the heat. So before the compressors were AC and they were scroll type compressors. Here. We have a DC power compressor, so we take the AC power, convert it to mm -hmm. DC power through some um, complicated electronics, mm -hmm. and then we provide a um, precise amount of pulses to that compressor to give mm -hmm. us, here on the right-hand picture, a thousand steps. So instead of a high, medium, low, now we have a thousand steps in between there to give us just the amount of um, frequency that we need to remove heat. So just just the amount of energy we need to remove the heat to where we're not wasting any energy on those high, medium, low wow. settings. So that would imply 
that there's a whole heck of a lot of sensors out there. Maybe Correct. a sensor sensing the interior of the space to be cooled, and then some sensors right in the internal workings there. So yeah, Fujitsu is actually a very big software company, mm -hmm. and they're very big in programming and algorithms. So they take these, take all those information from those sensors, mm -hmm. air thermistor sensors, pipe thermistors, and they mm -hmm. take all that information in the, the outdoor temperature, indoor temperature, and they really make the system efficient. Only use the amount of electricity it needs to remove the amount of heat on the inside. And how about humidity sensors? Is that one of them? No. No. That, that, that's a whole separate uh, issue, I guess. Especially here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because a lot of the function of an AC in our climate Correct. is to dehumidify to, I think it's like 65 relative humidity, some, something like that. Yeah, it is a, yeah. definitely one of the added benefits to air conditioning. We get the mm -hmm. cool air and then it drops below the dew point to where we get that condensation. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we've seen here in Hawaii to where even that can't keep up with the type of dehumidification that we need. And we're actually, in some cases, heating up the air mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to dry it out before it enters yeah. the space, so mm -hmm. getting very creative here in this humid environment. Well, you know, it certainly doesn't apply just to us because uh, Fujitsu, of course, distributes worldwide, Correct. including to South Asia. And those of you who, like me, have been to South Asia, you will know that a typical day there is like a really hot, humid day here. We say, lucky you live Hawaii, and we really mean it. Our temperatures are higher, and our relative humidity is lower. Therefore, the AC has, has less uh, work to do. But on that cheery note, we need to take a break. Back in a moment, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, Brett Floystadt. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, with Brent Fleustad. I should know, be able to pronounce that name really well because it's Norwegian and I'm uh, half Norwegian. But in any case, welcome from the, the cold uh, climate, Thank Brett, you. to the warmer climate. And let's, let's move on to the next slide. We got lots to cover here. So controls, 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 they don't sound very sexy at all, but say what's going on in your automobile <clears throat> engine now and all those things going on in your dashboard, you could not do any of that without a jillion controls in the engine and in the dash and so forth. And so it is with the new uh, HVAC systems. What, what are the uh, economy mode? What, what is economy mode here, Brent? So economy mode says the thermostat setting automatically changes. So this one's gonna be more of the fan speed's gonna automatically change mm -hmm. to save energy. Maybe somebody mm -hmm. left the fan on high mm -hmm. and it's becoming below the set point. Mm -hmm. So that it's gonna automatically kick the fan, temp fan speed back 
to save electricity mm -hmm. on that indoor unit, the wall units that yeah, you see. And, and still keep the room nice and cool. cool. Correct. Yeah. And then the next setting, energy saver, that's the one that's actually going to drop the set point. Mm -hmm. And so that one's going to variate the set point. So it's going to heat up the room. Say our set point's at 72, it's going to heat up the room to 74. Still, like you said, make it comfortable, mm -hmm. but again, saving energy. And then the last one, my favorite, the ESP Energy Saving Program, our highest efficiency, highest tech um, wall unit has actually has a little motion sensor, has mm -hmm. a little eye, mm -hmm. so it can sense if there's motion in the room. If there isn't motion for 20 minutes, it's actually going to kick the set point up four degrees, in our case, for cooling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to save energy as well. And then when somebody returns, it's the set point's going to return back to 72 or yeah. the desired set point. And this is a big um, feature yeah. that's very desired. Yeah, because the, the higher the set point, the the, uh, there's a, a, almost a logarithmic scale of, of the uh, energy savings according to the lower uh, or higher set, set points. And it's not as if anybody's going to walk into a hot, humid room. It's just up a little bit, may feel a little bit warm, but as soon as that motion is there, zoom, the unit kick, kicks on again and starts delivering cold air again. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's just uh, beautiful. That, that's what I mean about delivering cool there when you want it at as much as you want. And just, I like to think of it as just delivering the amount of energy you need mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. that cooling, mm -hmm. you know? Pre precisely. Let's move to the uh, next slide here. So this is uh, another really cool controls mm -hmm. aspect, as you can see. Yeah, so that means when, when you're on, oh, so it, it mentions vacation rental units. Yep. How, how would something like that work? So especially in Maui, we see a lot of vacation rentals and mm -hmm. people want to see how much their renters are using the air conditioning uh, uh, if they uh, left uh, it on, mm -hmm. if nobody's there. Uh, it's in between periods. So even though you probably have to be pretty wealthy to have a vacation rental in Maui. These mm -hmm, people are still mm -hmm. very energy conscious. That's why I put the picture of a light bulb with mm -hmm. money because it seems like pe even with people who have money, everybody's being very conscious of their energy bill and their energy usage. Well, there's a reason they got to be wealthy. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what would happen? Let's say they happen to, uh, the owner happens to know that the tenants are out for the day at the beach and the AC is still going full blast. Can they control it remotely or? Correct, so they can control the unit from anywhere in the world. They can be in Ohio mm -hmm. and be monitoring their system. They can set the set point, turn it on, off, and even um, change the temperature there. Mm -hmm. So it's a really cool feature that we're really excited about. All the homeowners love it because they can do just that. They could be at work and see if they left it on mm -hmm. and see if they're using that energy that they don't want to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if they <coughs> say pretty sure that they're going to get home at 5.30 that evening, can they then remotely set, uh, okay, let's get this system going up. They're getting to temperature at 5.15, just a little before they, they arrive back in the house. Correct. They can set timers from there as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then on their way home, just turn it on so everything's nice and pre-cooled. Mm -hmm. And another mm -hmm. really cool feature we have is the Alexa voice control. Ah. And what I could see with this one is, again, people forgetting to turn things off. And mm -hmm. now when they're mm -hmm. leaving their house, before they go out the door, they mm -hmm. say, Alexa, turn off my Fujitsu. Mm -hmm. And then it's off. It's saving energy. They know it's off. They didn't have to go over to the thermostat, press a mm -hmm. button. Mm -hmm. And that seems the kind of the world and the technology we're moving towards is this voice control in smart yep, homes. Yep, yep. We're, we're certainly finding this or the responsiveness in, in our iPhones now. Correct. Yeah. That's beautiful. And so, so oh, here, what, what else? Oh, oh schools. Whoa. Schools. Yeah. So you, you know, we had this huge... Uh, push Governor Ige was to cool a thousand classrooms quickly. This was during that horrible, horrible heat wave that we had about two and a half years ago. So Fujitsu was one of the uh, 
participants in the Cool Schools program, is that it? Or? Correct, it was the uh, heat abatement project, mm -hmm. we called it, where we started out with the hottest areas on the island, and mm -hmm. we, like Eva, and we really try to get those classrooms cool so the kids can function and think correctly, because mm -hmm. it's actually scientifically proven that if your brain is above a certain temperature, it can't perform correctly. Yeah, and, and we've all experienced that on a personal level, too. Yeah. Correct. And, and so, if, if, the, if the kids' sweat is dripping down on the paper that they're <laughs> trying to, uh, which has yeah. literally happened, or they're trying to write, yep. and their hands are all full of sweat in the papers, yeah, that's not, not a pleasant experience at all. And of course, the teachers are not very happy either. Yeah, so you can yeah. see some of those jobs we did out in Eva Beach and Farrington mm -hmm. High School the outdoor units and the indoor unit on the left there. It's kind of funny, you can see the old fan actually behind there. So mm -hmm. I put the Fujitsu right in front of the old fan mm -hmm. that they had in there. And it's really, systems are performing correctly and it's all off of PV as well. Oh. So they have battery backups, PV, mm -hmm. to where all the energy that's supplied to the Fujitsus is all created from the sun. Mm -hmm. And do you know what happens when the schools are, are not functioning? What happens to all that generated energy? Of course, some of it would go into the, uh, the storage unit. Yeah, once the battery backup is full, mm -hmm. and then the panels become more dormant. Oh, so they, when the system is fully charged. The, they, do they feed into the grid after they're full, or? No, I know they have, um, they're connected to the grid to charge the batteries at night, but they mm -hmm. didn't say anything about back feeding, because mm -hmm. I know there's a kind of a... Yeah, the, the fire department is a little uh, sensitive about that. Yeah. If there's an emergency and they think all the power is off, mm. but, oh, so they go into a, a, a building, a school, and they're beginning to fool around with live wires and they think they're off, but... The solar system yeah, is still feeding creating. in. That has rather unfortunate consequences. Yep. So we we work very, very closely with the fire, so, yeah, the fire department. Okay, next. And another slide. great project that, um, mm -hmm. that we're trying to get Fujitsu on is the Nimitz Transitional Village. Mm -hmm. So families, homeless families with jobs, they give them these units. It's kind of a humanitarian project. Mm -hmm. And we were approached by Photon Works because they created the microgrid you Precisely. see there yeah. with the Tesla batteries and the PV on every single unit. And every have, single unit? Every single it's, unit has PV and solar hot water. Yeah, there's, there's 30 units up and running right now. Yeah, in the first yeah. phase. Yeah. And so they chose... They approached us and are considering the um, our Fujitsu 33 seer, as you see there. So we were talking earlier. Oh yeah, we eight talked about seer. seer. Yeah. Now we're you know above triple that. Mm -hmm. So we got a 33 seer unit, the RLS 3Y. The Y there is for Wi-Fi, and mm -hmm. they wanted the Wi-Fi so they could kind of control the temperatures themselves, and so the occupants just kind of have an on-off switch, mm -hmm. and then the building manager, site manager would have the Wi-Fi, uh -huh. have all the units on there and be able to. And I, I guess he, there, there's a central control office and then the building manager controls from there or? No, he'd be, they'd be able to do it just from their Re phone. Remotely, okay, okay. From their yeah. smartphone. Yeah, because you certainly don't want every occupant turning the thing on full yeah. blast 24 seven or, or whatever, yeah. Correct. So yeah, this is a, a huge success story, I know that this that particular project is going to, is making nationwide news really because so many cities are, are faced with this homeless problem yeah, it's and really if you can not just provide just minimal housing but at least some ac also that is absolutely uh, terrific there yeah, it's really a unique pr uh, project that we're yeah, proud to be a yeah, part of that, that's just wonderful and so the next slide is so we also talked about um fans so mm -hmm. we had the air conditioning, now we have ventilation fans, and fans mm -hmm. are a big deal now, especially with fresh air requirements. Mm -hmm. We're bringing in hot, humid air into the space now to our AC systems have to be increase in capacity. Mm -hmm. So we found a couple unique ways of treating that fresh air or exchanging it to where we can get our fresh air but not having to increase the capacity. 
Mm. And down there in the lower left-hand corner is our refresh kit. Mm. And that also has EC or DC motors, so uses DC technology to get that infinite amount of speeds. And this is a really cool kit because it has a filter in there to filter the dirty air, a fan, and a speed mm. controller that you can mm -hmm. set in terms of limits of temperature or humidity. So if it's too high humidity, it'll shut off and only cycle on every 10 minutes to satisfy the fresh air code, uh -huh, but not uh -huh. continuously bring in that yeah, extreme yeah, yeah, yeah. air that you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. And again, maintain comfort while absolutely reducing the, uh, Correct. the, the life there. Yeah. Because we have these new codes that say everybody needs fresh air, mm -hmm. and that's really affected the design and the... Yeah, that, that's become a big issue because we used to build our homes especially so loosely that you'd get enough fresh air just coming in through the cracks. But now we build homes very, very tightly. So this business of bringing in dedicated fresh air is a real big deal these days because even in a home, you want enough circulation to keep the, uh, the CO2 levels up. At, well, oxygen up, CO2 down. Yeah. yeah. We always heard the term, go get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. Well, now mm -hmm. you don't have to. It's coming in right to you. Pre you don't got to get out of your chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a cool okay. device that we have is the... Um, we have one. This is our last slide here. Is the yeah. energy recovery ventilator. And mm -hmm. that, just like it says, recycles the conditioned air. So you're bringing in hot, humid air from the outside, mm -hmm. and you'll be exchanging it through that cross-type heat exchanger in the middle to where the hot, humid air isn't as hot or humid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you exhaust the kind of stagnant air mm -hmm, to the outdoors, mm -hmm. and that'll be a little bit colder, but not all of your conditioned space Great. out the door, Great. which is really cool technology. Yeah. And, and then you make the uh, the AC, the, the work of the AC much, much uh, less. It, it Correct. It just doesn't have that much uh, work to do. I see this being implemented more and more by engineers out in mm -hmm, the field. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, as a closing remark, <clears throat> I once uh, asked a, a wholesaler of AC units, what percentage of your residential units are split systems like this, and what percentage are the old-fashioned window shakers, even though the window shakers are a lot cheaper? Mm -hmm. And he said uh, it's at least 90% split systems right. because they're, they cost more initially, but the savings, the quality, the everything, including the life. I mean, I can just tell that these have long, long projected lives. Yeah, we offer a 12-year warranty, so that just shows you how far, how much they back up yeah, their product with, and with how long it's supposed to last. Yeah, with a 12-year warranty, you can be pretty darn <clears throat> sure this thing is going <clears> to <throat> last for minimum 15 years and, and, and even uh, beyond that. We even have a gecko warranty if they crawl up in there and fry the board. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I don't know quite how they <laughs> that it works. They love it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were a gecko, I'd love it in there, too. Yeah. So on that cheery note, we need to close for the day. Thank you, Brett Floristad, Thank for you. being a wonderful guest and giving us optimism about the future. All technology is improving, and AC technology, as exemplified by your product, is improving by leaps and bounds <clears throat> we're able to achieve greater comfort greater safety at l much less energy costs and the maintenance of these units is going to be just much better also so see you next time code green think tech hawaii